These ribs are tender, juicy, and packed with awesome flavors. Forget barbecue sauce. You're gonna love these. Hey everyone, I'm Flo, dude is behind the camera, and we're all about simple food, simple faith. I am always looking for new ways to make certain recipes, and ribs is one of those, because I can only really think of barbecue sauce, but there must be so many other ways to have ribs. So today we are going to combine some of my favorite Vietnamese flavors and make Vietnamese style ribs. Starting with back ribs here, I've already segmented them into individual bone segments and I've taken off the silver skin on the back. And if you don't know how to do that, you can check out one of my other videos on pork ribs and I can show you how to remove that skin. I have five and a half pounds of ribs here. You don't have to use as much. You can double the recipe and make more depending on how many people you're trying to feed. But this will feed probably four to six people. All we need to do for this recipe is to make a marinade and I'm going to make it in my blender, but you can just chop up all the ingredients if you don't have a blender into very fine pieces or you can use a food processor, it's totally up to you. I'm using two shallots. And if you don't have shallots, you can always use onion. I'm just gonna throw them into the blender as is, because it's gonna, the blender's gonna do its thing. And I have about six cloves of garlic here. You can use as little or as much as you like. Also just throw them into the blender. Also using two stalks of lemongrass. And for lemongrass, you're only using the very bottom of the stalks. That's where all the flavor is and the most tender part. So you're going to use about maybe three inches, four inches, and this the rest of this is discarded. And these I do want to chop down to help the blender blend them up better, more easily. And all of this is also going in. And chilies, it all depends on how spicy you want it. We're just gonna use one in the sauce and the other two I'm gonna slice up for garnish later. I'm just gonna toss that in. Using a quarter cup of dark soy sauce. And if you don't have dark, you can just use regular soy sauce. That's so exact, Flo. I know, right? <laughs> I should just do what I usually do, eyeball it. A quarter cup of fish sauce. And a quarter cup of water. And a quarter cup of sugar. I love Vietnamese food because it's always about the balance of all the different flavors, sweet and spicy and salty and what's the other one? Sour. Right, and let's blend it up. <laughs> Plugging it in would help, huh? Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, let's try that again. All right, that should be good. So I'm gonna make this look like a crime scene but I don't want to touch that sauce because it has a chili in it. Okay, I'm gonna pour all of it on here. And then I'm gonna save about half a cup that I'm gonna use for basting later. Oh my goodness, it smells so good. So this marinade, you just want it kind of all over the ribs. And because I'm only going to marinate this for about an hour, that's why I cut them up into segments so that you don't have to marinate it as long. If you were going to do a whole rack of rib, you can totally do that as well. And uh, just let it marinate longer. The longer you let it marinate though, the more flavorful it's gonna be. I'm gonna stick this in the fridge for an hour. All right, so the ribs have been marinating for actually about an hour and a half and I'm using my electric 
pressure cooker to cook the ribs because I find that this is the best way and fastest way to get ribs done. You can do these in, in the oven if you want. Um, it'll just take longer. So I already have a trivet in there along with a cup of water at the bottom. Putting the lid on, locking it into place. Making sure this ceiling knob is on ceiling. And we are going to high pressure for 15 minutes. If you want them more fall off the bone, then I would suggest about 18 to 20 minutes, but we like our ribs to have the meat kind of still sticking to the bone so that there's a little bit of tug so that you can actually hold a rib and eat it without the meat completely falling off. I'm using a six quart pressure cooker today and I know that it fits two racks, two full racks of ribs in there. If you have a bigger one, you feel more comfortable, by all means, you can use that same amount of time. But if you're doing this in the oven, it's the rule is slow and low to get to a, a fall off the bone type of rib. So if you're going to cook it in the oven, I would put the ribs down on your pan, cover it tightly with aluminum foil and let it bake at maybe 300 for about an hour and a half to two hours at the very least and check it from there. And if it's not quite fall off the bone or to the tenderness that you like it, you can always leave it in there for a little longer. But this is why I love the pressure cooker. It's just gonna infuse the meat using pressure with more flavor in a short amount of time and we can get dinner on the table in no time. Oh, it's done. Yep. Quick releasing the pressure. That was good, right? Not too frightening. All right, let's see what we've got. I know they don't look like much right now, but the smell is amazing. Okay, I'm gonna take them out. I've already lined a, a sheet pan. I have a full size here. And the reason why the parchment paper is crumply is because when you crumple parchment paper and then lay it down, it actually stays in place. Not like when it's straight out of the box, it kind of slips and slides on the pan. So oh, and it also wants to curl up on itself again. Yeah. So I'm gonna lay these down and we're gonna stick these under the broiler. So at this point, if you have a grill, you can always just throw them on the grill and uh, that would be super yummy, but we don't have a grill. So I'm doing this under the broiler. Remember we saved that marinade. I'm just gonna stir it up. Then we're gonna baste the ribs with this. And again, if you're doing it on the grill, you do the same. Look at that. And once this goes under the broiler, it's gonna be so, so good. So have the broiler preheating on high. We're gonna stick it under there for three to five minutes. Oh my goodness, doesn't that look so much better? Right, flipping these over so we can brown the other side. I don't have much marinade left, but it'll be fine. It'll still be super tasty because we use the pressure cooker to infuse the marinade into the meat even further while cooking. It'll be good. Oh, you have so little left. I know, I'm just going to lightly get them if I can. Everyone gets a little bit. That's right. Or maybe this pale one can have a little bit more. Wow, you're so generous. <laughs> Another three to five minutes on the other side. I totally wish that you guys could smell this. It is so aromatic. It is so delicious smelling, just yummy. And uh, very pleasing to the eye with uh, the color. Yeah, so if you had this on a grill, can you even imagine? Not done yet. So I've chopped up some cilantro and if you don't like cilantro, you don't have to do this part, but to just add some freshness to this, it will be so delicious. And if you don't have cilantro or you don't like cilantro, you can always use green onions. That'd be yummy. 
and some chili. Remember I chopped up some chili earlier? And remember, if you're gonna to touch chili, <laughs> make sure to wash your hands immediately afterwards so that you don't accidentally touch your eye or something and get like that chili oil into your eye. Are you all ready for? Mm-hmm. The taste, oh, and the smell. Serving you guys up these dishes has been a real pleasure for us, maximizing your food dollars because in this economy, things are just, food costs are just going up and up. And not only maximizing your food dollars, but maximizing the taste that you get. So you can skip the restaurant and still have restaurant quality food at home. When we portion out the food in terms of ribs, uh, slicing them up individually, we find that food goes further for more people than giving out slabs or bigger portions of food or ribs. So I don't know if that's a psychological thing, but we more often wind up with leftovers when the ribs are cut individually, uh, or even with steak cut up into strips versus big slabs or full steaks on their own. Weird, huh? Yeah, I grabbed one without the peppers on it because it's all this is just for looks. What about cilantro? Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm, okay. Wow. Real deep flavors. Awesome umami. Fish sauce coming through. Texture. Good. It's got that tug. Instead of just falling off it. See? I can hold on to it. Meat is tender and juicy. So good in every way. Awesome. Thanks, dude. Mm -hmm. So when you think about ribs, it doesn't have to be about barbecue sauce. For more Asian-style rib recipes, check it out in my cookbook below, Chinese Homestyle.